Uh, firstly, uh, such a pleasure to be here. I am, uh, uh, and thank you, uh, Dr. Fahi, for introducing me to the group. We are um, uh, currently doing uh, uh, clinical studies with uh, Dr. Fahi uh, in the US, but we're also doing studies with NHS. Uh, I'm going to try and do justice to this topic. It is an interesting topic, but in seven minutes, it's, I'll have to speak very quickly through the science. Um, and, uh, but for any of you who are, in, who are interested, you should actually look at our Oxford Academia uh, publication three weeks back in Stem Cell Journal. So to begin with, let me start off by making some very bold claims. And as I walk you through the presentation, you can judge me against these claims. There are three global firsts that we claim. This is the first pan-cancer blood test. We can detect every cancer, but more interestingly, we can detect it earlier than known technologies because we can detect it at something called cancer in C2 which is when cancer cells are proliferating in a primary organ, but the physical tumor has not formed, so it is not visible on a PET scan, right? Not only can we detect it at this stage, we can actually tell you which cancer, where it is forming straight from a blood test. That's claim one. <coughs> claim two, this is the first prognostic test for cancer. From a blood test, not only can we tell you that you do not have cancer, we can tell you that you will not get cancer for the next one year because what we're essentially measuring are the biomarkers for the different cancers. Remember, this is a pan-cancer blood test, right? But we are, we are measuring these biomarkers. So if you're within a safe zone, we know that the fastest cancer <coughs> doesn't move from here to a tumor stage in one year, right? So you can see the use case of a test like that. It's a blood test all of us will do once a year and we will either catch cancer at stage one or before when it is infinitely more curable. That's claim two. Claim three, this is the big one to understand. Not only can I tell you that this person has cancer, I can tell you the primary organ. This is liver cancer. I can tell you the subtype of cancer, liver cholangiocarcinoma. I can tell you the secondary organs it has, invest, it has got into. It has moved into lung and bone. I can tell you what is going to be something unique, the next target organ. It is now spreading into the pancreas because it's state zero of the next organ. Right? Uh, it is not fully formed as yet, but we can tell you it's moving there. I can tell you the mutation readings from the, uh, uh, from the tumor tissue, not just for the primary tumor, but also for the secondary tumors. Right? Why is this important? Somet sometimes the driver mutation is coming from a secondary tumor, not from the primary tumor. If you look at the Salk Institute studies, when you do a biopsy, you speed up the activity of the tumor. So effectively, if we can give you this data straight from a blood test, we don't need to conduct an invasive biopsy. Having heard this, right, the first question you should ask yourself is, what is the science? Like I said, I'll get, that, uh, get into that in a second. But more importantly, why wouldn't this breakthrough have been made by a Grail or a Garden or a Freenome, right? Very smart minds, both in the US and Europe, were looking for blood-based markers. Why didn't they make this breakthrough? Why did we make this breakthrough sitting out of India, right? The answer is actually quite simple. We're not the smartest guys under the sun, nor are we magicians. We just got plain and simple lucky. We were actually a drug company that was working on a cancer drug. While we were working on the drug, oops, while we were working on the drug, right, we came across a very miraculous breakthrough. We realized that the drug was acting on a class of stem cells. These stem cells were creating epigenetic changes and becoming cancer stem cells. The cancer stem cells create cancer cells. The cancer cells, then a billion of them come together to form a tumor. Once a tumor forms, that's a one cubic centimeter tumor, it has a billion cells, right? Once a tumor forms, it starts to shed its outer layers, which are called circulating tumor cells. When the circulating tumor cells break down, they release their contents, which is ctDNA and cell-free RNA. The entire liquid biopsy space in the US and Europe was busy looking at these tumor uh, results, which were CTCs, ctDNA and cell-free RNA. What we realized was we had come across a causative marker because these stem cells are growing into the cancer cells. Now, once we realize this, the first thing that I want to show you is uh, there is a marker reading that we get from our enriched cells of interest, right? On the left side, you've got what, what healthy blood looks like, right? So effectively, you get an HRC score, right, or a reading between zero and two, right? What we found was that it starts to increase when there are certain inflammatory diseases. This can be cancer, but this can also be other diseases. You're still healthy, but at two to six, we start getting concerned. We will ask you to come back in six months time. 
6 to 10 is the most insightful range because we realized that at this stage, no other disease is passing, passing this stage except for cancer. What that means is that there is a mutation happening in a primary organ and cancer cells are proliferating, but the physical tumor has not formed, so it is PET negative. And 10 plus is of course cancer present. Now when we found this, we actually did a thousand patient study which got published one and a half years back in stem cell review and reports where they literally took 500 cancer patients, 500 non-cancer patients from a blinded, blind, blinded sample where we, all we got was a blood sample with a code on it. We detected each and every non-cancer patient. Right? This is important to understand. Please, uh, we get a reading for a non-cancer patient. Remember that when you are looking at the grails in the gardens of the world, the absence of tumor cells is indicative of non-cancer. We get a physical reading for non-cancer. Right? Absence of evidence is not the same as evidence of absence. Right? And that is the reason why we get such high accuracy. We detected each and every non-cancer patient. Well, you know what that means, the HRC reading was 0 to 2, some of them in the 2 to 6 range. We detected every 4th stage cancer, every 3rd stage cancer, every 2nd stage cancer, every 1st stage cancer. We'd, of the cancer patients, the CRO that was keen on actually understanding because they didn't know what the marker was at that stage, they had cut the cancer patients by on-treatment patients, RX naive patients, cancer detected treatment not started as yet. And our zero patients where surgically, well, you've removed, uh, uh, you know, uh, someone has breast cancer, you've done a lumpectomy, you've removed the tumor, right? It didn't matter because we had such high accuracy. What fascinates the doctors is it worked on all the big ones, right? Remember that a thousand patient study cannot possibly cover all cancers. There are 200 different types of cancers, 3000 subtypes of cancer, but this covers all the big ones. Breast, ovarian, lung, leukemia, prostate, pancreatic, colon. What fascinated the doctors is it's working on solid cancers, it's working on blood cancers, it's working on soft tissue sarcomas. Very interesting, the question is what is the science? There are two products, okay? HRC and all organ biopsy. I'm not, HRC I've already uh, uh, indicated, it basically tells you when cancer is absent, go away, come back next year, right? Uh, uh, cancer is imminent or cancer is present. Right now, if you're imminent or present, the reality is that we can do the secondary test where we are able to do the sequencing test and tell you which cancer, right? Cancer types, subtype, primary organs, secondary organs, next target organs, mutations, expressions, and so etc. Question again is why is this working? Okay, our bodies has sev have 70 trillion cells, right? Um, there are 50 billion cells that die every day and are being replaced. There are 200 different. How much? One minute. Listen, I am not going to go into each and every one of these slides, but instead, let me actually just tell you a very simple thing. The, the, the issue that you had was liquid biopsy companies were actually looking at the other end of the problem. What we realized was that we can detect these cancer stem cells a good 18 months before the tumor has even formed. So by the time the tumor forms, right, we are able to actually get very, very loud signals. Now, having got, done this study, if you actually look at the commentary that has been put out because of the stem cell paper, a lot of people have asked, how can you possibly get a, such a high sensitivity and specificity? Right? And that's a legit question to ask. Right? I mean, please appreciate that anyone going into a study never expects that they're going to get 100% success. Right? But let me explain why we get such high, uh, high accuracy uh, from, with, the, with the help of a Gumpertzian model. This was coined by an English scientist called Benjamin Gumpertz. He plotted the number of tumor cells on the y-axis, time on the x-axis. And he said cancer goes through three phases, early phase, rapid expansion phase, uh, plateau phase. He said the tragedy of cancer today is we only understand the disease in the plateau phase from a billion cells to a trillion cells. What does that mean? A billion cells is a one cubic centimeter tumor, small tumor in any cancer. Right? And by the time we reach a trillion cells, well, you've got fatality because you passed fourth stage. But a billion cells do not form in a day. The reason we are different is because we can detect it in the rapid proliferation phase and the initial phase. So we can detect it at 100 million cells. We can detect it at 1 million cells. We can detect it at 10,000 cells. We can detect it at one cell. We detect it six months before the first cell comes up because we are not interested in the cancer cell. What we are looking for is a stem cell, which is a precursor to the cancer cells. And that is the reason why we have a different technology. I'll stop there. Incidentally, I'll just put out the uh, details of the paper that you should actually take a look at. There's been a significant amount of coverage even in popular media on uh, on this, but this is this is a paper that you guys should you should check out. I'll stop.
I have never seen the case in biology where something is 100 percent, even on the major. The first question is, can you distinguish between cancers that will become metastatic versus uh, benign cancers that will not? So uh, if I can put it this way, right, um, understand the reason we are able to do that, okay, is because it's not effectively once we look at the cancer stem cell to cancer to normal pluripotent stem cell ratio, it gives us an indication of whether you are, can like I said, cancer is absent or it is growing or it is present because it starts showing up 18 months before. But what we realized was that we understood the entire chain of cells that were the building blocks of the tumor which we are able to isolate from the blood. Because we are able to isolate them, it's about enriching those cells. When you fragment them and sequence them, right, it is akin to doing a biopsy of the tumor tissue itself. So we don't necessarily need to do a biopsy of the tumor tissue. We are giving you the mutation readings that are coming from a primary and secondary tumor point straight from the blood. And what is your level of prediction of cancers that are metastatic versus? So till now, till now, we have not found one error, right? Till now. Now understand, like I said, that I, the reason I say, I, 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 I made the statement that listen, uh, you know, uh, we claim that it works on all cancers, but till now, right, we have only conducted it on 25 cancers, right? So we need to actually get more data, right? But the reason we believe that this works on all cancers, and I couldn't go into those slides, is because the CSE is the culprit in all cancers. The problem is that most scientists thought that the mutations led to the tumor, right? So they couldn't understand the commonality element of cancer because that mutation could be happening in any organ, anywhere in the, uh, in the body. The, the interesting thing was that the CSC actually starts forming in all cancers and we isolate them from the blood. Sorry. Second, the second question, is your marker RNA sequence from blood from, from blood cells? So look, uh, you know, it's not cell-free, right? It's not ctDNA, it's not cell-free RNA, right? They're all pieces of the tumor. And that's the fundamental difference between that, the, what the liquid biopsy companies were doing and which is why they didn't find it. It's about isolating us. And by the way, like I started off by saying, it's not because we are smart, right? We just got lucky because the molecule was acting on it. We followed and we looked at the marker and we realized, oh my God, that these cells are actually getting an epigenetic change and becoming cancer stem cells, right? Now, this is a very fundamental reason for why we made this breakthrough. So is it an RNA? It's an RNA, uh, but it's it's from cer certain cells of interest. It's not it's not cell free. Yeah, yes. I mean, you know, there's other theories of cancer. There's a theory of cancer that cancer cells are being produced all the time, and our immune yeah. system yeah. eliminates them. Yeah. Okay. So you know, I mean, and then there's things like HPV six that you know almost 100 percent will cause cervical cancer yeah. over a given period of time. Yeah. You know when you know when do you detect that? You know, I mean, uh, if if a, if a woman has HPV V6 and are, are, are you, you know you should detect that from the very beginning. Yeah. You, you know. I started off by telling you that the ratio of the stem cells is very very critical, right? Because there are many diseases that get you into the indeterminate stage, right? It's just that they don't cross the barrier of a certain level which only cancer is doing, right? So in answer to your question, yes, you and I produce cancer cells as well. That's the p53, uh, the gene that cracked the cancer code. Right? Uh, it talks about that, right? that you and I produce cancer cells, but they are controlled because effectively the body has inbuilt mechanisms to, uh, to repair itself. The challenge is when it goes beyond a certain point and we realize that we could measure it by finding the ratio of those stem cells uh, to uh, 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 the healthy pluripotent stem cells ratio. Incidentally, by the way, we didn't even find these stem cells. These stem cells were found by an American scientist in an American university 15 years back but he found it next to the tumor and he hypothesized that these cells are growing into the tumor, but it had no diagnostic value. What is the diagnostic value of cells sitting next to a tumor telling you there's a tumor close by? We isolated it in the blood and because we were able to measure that level, we were able to tell you what is the stem cell. Uh, uh, but, but I mean, what type of markers, if you did RNA? We've already put that out in the paper. 
let me also no we've already put out we've already put that out in the paper right so we have actually written out the uh, the marker itself right but that said we have not put out all the markers the reason we are getting such high sensitivity is because different cancers have different levels right but a very critical one we've actually already put out it's a type and of the immune system has lost its ability to respond to these cells it's getting inundated at some point you got to understand that you either worry about and uh, like i said i couldn't get into that slide right but the point is that um, uh, the body gets inundated with too many of these cells right and we realize that once it's gone beyond a particular barrier it's actually you know it's it's uncontrollably proliferating and that's the reason why cancer inundates so yeah, there's one more burning question so just well, because we're here to collaborate would you consider applying the error treatment on those cells if you detect them isolate them apply error? so that was going to be my question right the reality <laughs> is that was going to be my question right how uh, you know the reality is that what we are doing is going to change what we are trying to do is make cancer into an early stage disease right because if what we are saying is true we will detect st cancer at stage 1 and stage 0 consistently remember we redefine what is uh, cancer so the question was how can we intervene right mm -hmm. and actually um uh, intervene at an early stage uh and um, you know make cancer preventable as we understand it you don't need to have the tumor form so it's a cancer specific question yes okay thank you thank you very much awesome